So Judge Benitez has already taken the reins in the Miller v. Bonta California assault weapons ban, which the Ninth Circuit just forced back down to him. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you agree that bans on so-called assault weapons violates the Second Amendment, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Nautilus Ammunition. Nautilus Ammunition provides cheap, high-quality ammunition that is made in America. You can get 223 and 9mm for up to $3 to $5 cheaper per box than you would at other retailers. Nautilus provides fast shipping, and if you ever have any issues, you can call them and speak to someone who's actually a person in America. To get updates from Nautilus Ammunition, head on over to their Instagram page. I have it linked down below. And thank you again, Nautilus Ammunition, for sponsoring this video. So like I said in the intro, Judge Benitez, or St. Benitez as he's known in California, has already taken control of the Miller v. Bonta California assault weapons ban case. This comes off the heels of the Ninth Circuit remanding the case back down to him last week for reconsideration of the case in light of New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. That was the recent Supreme Court decision which found that the Second Amendment requires that the analysis be text as informed by history, and the Ninth Circuit has remanded the case back down to Judge Benitez for reconsideration in light of that test. That was an effort by the Ninth Circuit to punt this case once again and to stall the case out for as long as possible now that the Supreme Court has rejected their prior decisions and their prior analysis, which they used. However, Judge Benitez is wasting no time and has already ordered the parties in the case to file their supplemental briefs for his reconsideration. Now, for those not aware, Miller v. Bonta is a challenge to the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. Under California Penal Code Section 30515, the state of California bans various types of firearms based on their characteristics. For example, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a detachable magazine cannot have a flash hider, collapsible stock, forward vertical grip, and other features as well. If it does, then the state of California defines it as a so-called assault weapon and restricts the uh, purchase and possession of those items. The Miller case was originally heard in the Southern District of California before Roger T. Benitez, or St. Benitez as he's known in California. In reaching that decision, Judge Benitez used a standard review, which the Supreme Court just affirmed, and he looked at the text of the Second Amendment and the history of our nation to determine that the state's ban on these types of firearms is not constitutional. In fact, in reaching his original decision, he stated, a ban on modern rifles has no historical pedigree. Prior to the 1990s, there was no national history of banning weapons because they were equipped with furniture like pistol grips, collapsible stocks, flash hiders, flare launchers, or barrel shrouds. In fact, prior to California's 1989 ban on so-called assault weapons, those so-called assault weapons were manufactured, acquired, and possessed throughout the entire United States. Because the ban was not in line with the history of the nation and did not date even back to 1791 or really any real relevant time period, it is just a new construction of our recent generations, he found that that ban in California is unconstitutional. After he struck down the California assault weapons ban, the state of California then appealed that decision up to the Ninth Circuit, and they sought a stay and an appeal, and they were granted both by the Ninth Circuit. But ultimately, this case was put on hold at the Ninth Circuit level because it was kind of behind a bunch of other cases, including Rupp, which were waiting on the Supreme Court to rule in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin decision. However, recently, the Supreme Court did issue that ruling in Bruin, and they struck down the Ninth Circuit's use of the two-step approach and also affirmed text as informed by history as the correct constitutional analysis. In reaction to that decision by the Supreme Court, FBC through outside counsel filed a motion to lift the Ninth Circuit stay on the Judge Benitez ruling and to fast track this case through review at the Ninth Circuit level. Well, the state of California, of course, opposed that. They opposed that motion to lift the stay and they also pushed for the Ninth Circuit to vacate the Judge Benitez ruling and to remand the case back down to him for reconsideration of this case in light of Bruin. Essentially, the state of California's only tactic was to try and get this case remanded back down to the judge that has already ruled against them on this very issue. That really shows how weak the Bruin decision made these types of bans and also how weak it made the state of California in their arguments. Typically, the state of California has absolutely no issue with a case like this running its way through the Ninth Circuit because in the past, the Ninth Circuit was very favorable to the state of California and their bans and their violations of the Second Amendment because they could lean on the two-step approach, but that can no longer happen. So the only kind of tactic the state of California now has is to stall these cases out for as long as possible. They are no longer confident that they can win at the appeals court level and really at any level. So we were waiting to see what the Ninth Circuit was going to do. Were they going to remand this case or were they going to keep it at the Ninth Circuit level? Well, last Monday, we got an order from the Ninth Circuit and they issued an order vacating the Judge Benitez prior ruling and remanding the case back down to Judge Benitez 
for reconsideration in light of Bruin. So this case was just remanded back down to Judge Benitez last week, but we already got an order from Judge Benitez in this case now that it's back in his hands. And the order reads, pursuant to the decision of the Court of Appeals, vacating and remanding the case to this court, both parties are ordered to file briefs addressing New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, and to do so within 20 days of the date of this order. And it's signed the Honorable Roger T. Benitez. So now both sides have 20 days to file their new arguments in light of Bruin. This should be a fairly easy task for the plaintiff slash FPC because history is really on our side, is on all of our sides that promote the Second Amendment. However, this is going to be a really hard task for the state of California because now they only have 20 days and they must find some sort of historical analog dating back to 1791, which justifies this ban. They, as the government and the one who has this law, have the burden to show that this ban is valid and is valid according to the text and history of the Second Amendment. Even more so, they now have an uphill battle because Judge Benitez has already found in his initial judgment that all the history that the state of California presented originally was not sufficient to justify this ban on so-called assault weapons. So they have to completely start from scratch and find some sort of new history which supports this ban. Another important thing with this order that some may not realize is the speed at which Judge Benitez is proceeding forward with this case. If you look at the order, it was drafted and was ready to be signed the day after the Ninth Circuit remanded the case back down to him. Ultimately, he signed it on the 8th, but he already had his clerks or himself draft the order and it was ready to go. When you look at other cases like Rupp v. Bonta, which also deals with the California assault weapons ban and was also remanded back down by the Ninth Circuit to the district court, there was no order and there is still no order by that district court judge, which is now in control of Rupp. That case was remanded back down on June 28th of this year, but it went to the judge who issued a favorable ruling in the past in favor of the state of California, and that district court judge still has not gotten that case going whatsoever. We all knew that Judge Benitez took this issue and case really serious, and I think the speed at which he is moving forward with this case further reinforces that fact and shows that he really is on our side. He takes this issue serious and is going to proceed forward as fast as he can. Also, something else I want to point out is the fact that with the supplemental briefings that are due in 20 days, we will also likely see some sort of motion, maybe like a TRO or preliminary injunction, and maybe even down the road, a motion for summary judgment, which will be filed by FPC. As we saw at the Ninth Circuit level, the strategy of FPC and outside counsel was to get this case resolved as soon as possible and to get relief as soon as possible. And I don't see that strategy changing whatsoever, especially now that it's back in the hands of a favorable judge like Judge Benitez. So there is some relief that Judge Benitez can give sooner rather than later, but even if that happens, the state of California can appeal up to the Ninth Circuit. And that is why I said that the remand back down to Judge Benitez was actually bittersweet because ultimately this case will likely find its way back up to the Ninth Circuit for review. And that's why this is simply a stall tactic by the Ninth Circuit. But it's still good news that Judge Benitez is moving this along as fast as he can. But if we get any more information, I will let you all know. Also, like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signal to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits that notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So again, thank you so much for all of your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this issue was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.